Greetings, Earthlings. Today, I'm going to explain the differences between a dynamic and a condenser microphone and help you decide which one's right for you. So throughout this video, when I'm talking about a dynamic microphone, I'm going to be speaking into the Rode Procaster, which is a dynamic microphone. And when I'm talking about condenser microphones, I'll be speaking through the Rode NT1A, which as you guessed it, is a condenser microphone. So first, let's talk about how these different microphones work. And in order to help with that, I did pull some diagrams off of Shure's website, and I've thrown a link in the description directly to that site. As far as the dynamic microphone capsule, you have three main components, the diaphragm, the voice coil, which is actually attached to the diaphragm, and the magnet, which is permanently charged and creates a magnetic field. So how this works is when sound waves hit the diaphragm, that actually vibrates the voice coil. And with that movement of the coil within the magnetic field, it converts the audio signals into electrical signals that can be interpreted by your audio interface or by your amplifier. The condenser microphone also has three main components, the diaphragm case, which just holds everything together, the diaphragm and the back plate. And I should note that this design is known as a capacitor, or it used to be called a condenser, which is why they're called condenser microphones. So when this capsule is charged, it generates an electrical field. And as sound waves hit the diaphragm and it moves closer and farther away from the back plate, this translates the sound signals into electrical signals. And just another note, there are two different types of condenser microphones. A standard condenser microphone, which does require phantom power to actually charge the capsule, and an electric condenser microphone, which actually has a permanently charged microphone capsule. And since I said that, some of you are probably thinking, well, if the electric condenser microphone has a permanently charged capsule, why do I need phantom power? And that's because all condenser microphones have circuitry in them that allow them to work with standard microphone inputs. So regardless of the the condenser capsule you have, at the very least, that circuitry is going to require some voltage to work. Now that we have a basic understanding of how these microphones work, let's explore the real world differences between them. So when we look at dynamic mics, they have a very simple construction, which means they end up being extremely rugged. Dynamic mics also handle extremely loud sound signals really well, and they also do a pretty good job at background noise rejection. On the other hand, they have a relatively low sensitivity, meaning they have a lower output level, and they also most of the time lack a full frequency response. And the last thing I want to point out is that dynamic microphones have a very distinct broadcast sound to them because most radio stations use broadcast mics. Condenser mics, on the other hand, are more complex, meaning they will be more fragile, but this allows them to pick up a wider frequency response, have a more natural sound, and have a better sensitivity or a higher output level. And on the downside, with this type of microphone capsule, you do have to be careful because you can overdrive the capsule with extremely loud noises, and the electronics inside of all condenser microphones do generate a small amount of noise. And I just wanted to throw in a quick comparison of these mics on an acoustic to show you the different frequency responses as well as the off-axis performance. Now moving off axis of the dynamic microphone to show you how much of my voice is picked up as I move off to the sides of this type of microphone. Now I'm just moving off axis of the condenser microphone to show you how much of my voice it picks up as I move around 180 degrees. Now with all that information, I know you're asking yourself which microphone is right for me. So I think a dynamic microphone is going to be best in live situations because they are more durable, they handle loud noise as well, and they do pretty good at background noise rejection. I also think that if you're in any situation where you're extremely concerned with background noise, or if you want that really standard broadcast sound that you hear on podcasts or radio stations, then a dynamic mic might be right for you. And I think a condenser mic would be the right choice in a controlled environment like a studio if you have audio treatment you have control over all the audio going into the microphone you want that more natural sound and you're not that concerned with background noise 
All right, guys, I guess that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun or interesting or helpful, or you want to see more educational stuff like this on my channel, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what questions you want answered next. If you thought the video sucked, give me a thumbs down. If you want more videos just like this, go ahead and subscribe by clicking the logo directly beneath me. And also don't forget to vote for the mics you want reviewed next, as well as follow me on all the social media stuff. Links to everything, description down below. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.